Hello. In the last video, I briefly showed the difference between a, a broken LCD and a broken digitizer on a touchscreen device like a cell phone or a GPS receiver. I showed this example GPS receiver that has a broken digitizer. Something was slammed up against the front of the screen on this and it broke the top layer, which is the digitizer. The digitizer simply is the device of a touchscreen unit that senses the location and pressure of your finger or other object touching the screen to tell the unit where you're touching to activate touch sensitive functions. This has a cracked digitizer and because of that it's very difficult to operate. Most of the touch functions are not functional because of it. However, the screen underneath appears to be in good condition. I can still see a good quality picture underneath this broken digitizer. So I think we can just replace this digitizer and this GPS will be as good as new. I've purchased on the internet, direct from China, a replacement digitizer. So as you saw in the last video, this is a very thin device that sits on top of the LCD. And today I will take this apart and attempt to repair it. Okay, first I see four T6 screws around the outside edge. And we should be able to crack this open. Well, there's some plastic clips around the outside edge of this device. After I take those four screws out, I'm trying to carefully pop this open with the help of a little screwdriver being used as, as a spudger. There we go. So that should unplug. So on the bottom is the speaker, a battery, and that almost looks like an RF board. You can tell with the metal can here that's probably some RF, so I'll just leave that in place. Here's the part we're interested in. There's a few more clips that hold that front end. Now I'm going to push this out through the back. I'm being careful that I don't cause damage to the LCD with this broken digitizer. So I'm being real careful how I apply pressure to this since it's broken. And it looks like there's some tape around the outside edge that holds this all together. Actually, this digitizer has a thin metal frame around the outside edge. And that frame clips over the LCD assembly, which has a metal back plane. So we just need real carefully to pry this LCD out. We'll have to reuse that metal frame since the new digitizer does not have a frame of its own. So I'm going to be kind of careful as I, as I pry this LCD out so that hopefully I can reuse that metal frame. And voila! This is reflective coating for the LCD backlight. Right here is the LCD. So this gray part is the LCD, and this is the digitizer right here. And it is soldered onto this flat flex ribbon cable. So we'll need to very carefully take off a piece of tape that I see on the top, and then desolder that connection right there. While soldering iron is warming up, We'll take a look at the new digitizer just to make sure that it is the same size, and that the connector is in the same place, and it has the same footprint. And, well, it doesn't, but it's awfully close. This new flat flex lead doesn't really have a connector. It just has, uh, some, just has uh, some plating on the bottom. And it is slightly smaller than the original. 
but I think the footprint is still close enough that it'll reach the solder pads on the flat flex cable and it'll work. So it's not exact, but it's pretty close. So I need to be careful not to melt this flat flex cable while I desolder it. Actually, it is it's taped or glued in place yet. Oh, this is taped in place. There we go. So there's the old digitizer. There's some, some fragments of glass on top of this LCD, which I'll just brush off into the garbage. There is some very slight scratching on the LCD right at the point of impact, but is very faint, and I don't think it'll be a problem. But we still need to clean off what's left of that old cable. Looks like this cable originally was taped down and that it probably went through a reflow soldering oven and was soldered in place because there's still fragments of the old uh, flat flex cable from the old digitizer in place. That looks pretty good. There's not a lot of solder on those pads. So I'm going to add just a touch more if I can. I want just a little bit more than what's here already. So now I should be able to line up the new part. And there's solder on the pads underneath, which if we put this cable on top of those pads, we should be able to tack it in place just by applying heat to the top of those pads. There we go. Oop, I'm off a little bit. So now these three pads on the right lined up pretty well, but this fourth one is off by a bit. That's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. I want to see if I can carefully trim this last pad and move it slightly. This is tricky. Presumably if I had the right digitizer these would line up correctly but this is uh, just a cheapie from China it doesn't quite conform to specifications the way it should. But I can stretch that a little bit and I think it'll line up. I'll hold that in place with my soldering tool and put a little heat on it. That should be soldered. We'll take a close look at that. That's an ugly joint, but I think it'll work. Well, the last thing is I see, I have a little solder on top of these connectors, causing a little bit of a short. So I'm just going to take a little bit of desoldering braid and just take, clean the solder off the top of that flat flex cable. It's a rough connection, but I, I think it'll work. Considering how those didn't line up, that's about the best I can do. But before I go any further, I'd like to hook this up and see if it works. Okay, that cable's back in place. We'll turn it on. There, it's lighting up now. Make sure you can see that. And this digitizer just sitting on top right now, so it might not line up quite right. But we'll hit the agree button. Oh, that's a good sign. Where to? Excellent. This new digitizer is working 
just fine. Perfect. I like it. So we'll turn it back off and put it back together. Now the old digitizer is still in this metal frame and it's, it looks like it's taped in place. So I'm going to try to carefully remove it without getting glass all over the place. So we just pull that tape off around the edge once you get it started. And actually now I can have a better idea of how this is constructed. I can see now that the digitizer just sits on top of that frame, so I didn't have to take that frame off. And it's taped around the edge. And glued around the edge. I'm going to put this over the garbage can and see if I can break that out. Okay, I've peeled the digitizer, the old digitizer, off from this frame as best as I could. There's still some gunk left, but there's enough tape left on this frame that I think the new unit will stick in place pretty well. I'm just trying to bend the frame back in place. And this has a protective coating on each side that we can peel off. I'm going to make sure the LCD is clean. And we can peel off this protective coating. Then I can put this frame in place over the LCD. That'll snap in place. Now, I'm not sure what it takes to calibrate the alignment of this digitizer. In other words, the device has to know that when you press, say, in the upper right corner, that that is actually the, the upper right corner. But my guess is this GPS isn't that critical and that exact alignment isn't really a big deal. That looks like it's lined up pretty well. Need to kind of tuck that cable out of the way like that. And I think that is ready to be reassembled. I can see that when I put this back together, those bare connections won't be a problem. They won't short out against this, I don't think. So we can just uh, reconnect this cable. This is a basically a zero insertion force connector. So when you pull back that little black bale, really it's hard to see on camera, if I can get a better angle, there is in this case, this little black bale, if you flip that back, you can slide this end of that flat flex cable in. I think that's in place. You just fold that over and it holds it in place. I won't clip it back together just yet. I want to test it one more time. So far, so good. I want to see how, how far off this registration is. So I'm just going to tap around and just make sure that what I tap on actually lines up with what I'm trying to push. Yeah, looks pretty good. That works just dandy. So now we can just push it back together. Like that, the screen still looks good. It's still nice and clear. So we can put these last four screws in and we have a new, or just like new, GPS receiver with a new digitizer that's ready to use. These digitizers are not all the same. 
every different device likely will take a different digitizer. So in this case, this is a Garmin 40LM, Garmin Nuvi 40LM. So this digitizer was specific to the Model 40. So this just fits the 40 and the 40LM. LM just means lifetime map, so it's the same device. So you can't just go out and buy any old digitizer and have it work, because every device takes a different digitizer. So there you have it. Our GPS receiver is just like new and ready to use. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like the rest of my videos, you might want to subscribe to my channel.